Welcome to this Wiseout tutorial on Apply to Each Loops within Power Automate. Here's what you'll learn during the tutorial. So we'll start by having a look at what the tutorial aims to do, and we'll get at the exercise files needed, and then we'll go on to look at creating Apply to Each Loops manually, something you won't often do. Then we'll look at the more realistic alternative of creating them automatically by dropping fields in, and you'll discover at this point why Power Automate often creates Apply to Each Loops when you're least expecting it. What we'll then do is go on to look at something of a digression, which is how to copy dynamic content into expressions within an apply to each loop. So that's a very important topic. We'll look at how to debug apply to each loops. And finally, we'll look at how to create expressions manually by typing them in. And I would encourage you, if you're watching this tutorial, to stay to the end because that will teach you loads about how expressions are constructed in Power Automate. But that's enough of looking at me. I'm going to vanish now, as I tend to. And let's get started. So what I want to do in this part of the tutorial is show you not only the data we're going to use so that you can follow along, but also the destination we're heading towards so you can see where we're going. So in OneDrive, what I'm going to do is create a new folder and I'll call it 10 apply to each because this is tutorial number 10 in the series. And then we'll click on that. And within this, we'll upload a file. So if you choose files upload, You'll be able to find this file in the notes attached to the tutorial on YouTube that will tell you which Wiseout web page to go to. It's very similar to one we used earlier, as you're about to see. So if I click on that file, you can see it goes into Excel 365 and shows me a list of the 10 most uh, popular films of all time, at least at the time I created it anyway. Now, despite there being a table in the underlying Excel workbook that you've just uploaded, there isn't one in this, so what I need to do is quickly create a table because you can't load data without a table from Excel. So I'm going to choose Insert and choose Table and then choose OK. And then if I go to the Table Design tab, I'll just quickly rename my table and call it Films. I don't need to save anything, that happens automatically. So I've now got my workbook and I can import data from it. So here's what the destination flow will look like. This is what we're aiming to achieve. We're going to start by creating a variable which will hold an array of the titles of the films made since 2000. I've just sneakily coloured them to show them while you weren't looking. And they should return Avatar, Avengers Endgame and Star Wars. What we'll then do is load those films from Excel and then create a loop, an apply to each loop, which will go through each film adding its title to the array if it was made after 2000, and then we'll show that resulting array. So what I can do is actually show what this will look like when you run it, if I, if I execute this. And what you'll see is it pauses when it gets to the apply to each loop and shows a symbol. So that orange symbol shows it's doing something. And then after a few seconds, it will show the resulting array. And I can look at that and you can see the outputs is the list of films. Just before we go ahead and create this, I think it's worth making one point. This is an appallingly efficient way, inefficient way to do this. What I would be much better off doing is using OData as covered in the previous tutorial to add a filter. So I only pick out certain rows, but this is an excellent way to teach you about apply to each loops, which are a pretty integral part of Power Automate. So that's why I've chosen this example. So what we'll start by doing is just showing what an apply to each loop is. So I'm going to create a new flow, an instant cloud flow. I'll call it looping over films showing recent ones only because that's eventually what it will do. And we'll create it with a manual trigger. I need to add a step and get my information from Excel and choose list rows present in the table and then go through the usual rigmarole of choosing that it's from OneDrive. It's the OneDrive uh, library, the file, is in the folder called 10 apply to each and it's called top 10 films and the table within that if that would just get out of the way is called films what i'm now going to do is create an apply to each loop now this is something which is normally done automatically as i'll show you later in this tutorial but for the moment we'll apply it manually what it will do is take the value the list of items from the previous step and it will loop over them and all i'm going to do within this uh, loop is just use a compose statement to show what each row looks like. So what will my input be? Well, it's going to be something called the current item. 
Now you'll see this appear in a number of different guises. At the moment it says body value item, but sometimes you'll see it says current item and sometimes just item open close brackets, which we'll use later. So for the moment I'll choose that. And if I let my mouse linger over it, you can see it says a reference to the items in the, this current task. So that's set up automatically for you whenever you create an apply to each loop to refer to each of the items in turn. And that's what I'm going to do. So you can now try running this and see what happens. Not much, admittedly. So when you run the flow, it's running now, nothing much appears to have happened. It was also remarkably quick. I was quite surprised by that. If you click on the apply to each task and have a look at the compose, then what you can see is the 10 steps it went through. And that's my first film, Gone with the Wind. If I scroll up a bit and choose next, I can see my next film, which would be Avatar. And I can use this to debug it to see what all the films retrieved were. So each item is one row in the table, which makes sense if you think about it. So what we're now going to do is delete the apply to each loop that we just created and do it a more realistic way, which is to create it manually. So what I'm going to do is add a step. And what the step will do is that test a condition, which is whether the film is called uh, Titanic. In a bit, we'll change this to say that the year released was after 2000, which is slightly harder, as we'll see. So I'm going to choose a value. And instead of choosing the list of items, I'm going to choose a single column. Now, the moment I do this, can I explain what's about to happen? Because I've chosen a single column, it knows I need to loop over the rows in the table, testing the value of each. And so what it will do is create an apply to each loop and include the condition within that. And it's quite confusing when that first happens, you think, wow, what on earth, what on earth was that? If I let my mouse linger over the value, you can see it's referring to the output from the table. And if I go to the condition, and let my mouse linger over title, you can see it's referring to the field called title in the items, uh, uh, the item currently being considered. That's how you can refer to that, or one way anyway. So what I want to do is test whether that's equal Titanic. After much investigation, which you didn't have to watch, I decided you don't put inverted commas around that because it knows it's a string of text. And if it does equal Titanic, what I'll do is add it to my variable. So I'll click here to add an action to add it to my array, but I don't actually have an array at the moment. So I'll just collapse that for a bit and go back up to the top and add an action to initialize an array because you can't use a variable or array unless you've initialized it. I'll call it titles. It's going to be an array. It's going to hold a list of all the titles and I'll initialize it to an empty string. What I can then do within my apply to each loop and within my condition is if I've successfully found a film which equals Titanic, and let's face it, there'll only be one of them, I can add an action to append that to a, my, my array. So I'll choose append, choose the append to array variable. The variable holding the titles is called titles, and the thing I'm going to append is the current title. So that should build up an array containing all the titles. And the last thing I need to do is actually display the results. So I'm going to add it right at the bottom, another step. And this will be a compose action, which will just display the result of that array. Oops, there it is. And I can choose my titles array. So I'm hoping when I run this, that what it will do is loop over the rows in the table testing for each whether the title column or field equals Titanic, and if it is, choosing to add that to an array. And then it will display the results of that array at the end of the process. Let's see if it worked, fingers crossed. And there's my output, a singular, an array containing a single value, Titanic. What I could do is I could go back and choose to go through my conditions. It says next fail, but when I go to the third condition and expand that, you can see the expression result there is true. What we're now going to do is to edit this flow and then change it so it refers to the year and not the title. So what I can do is go to my apply to each loop and go to my condition. I can get rid of the title and just change it to the year number. 
and I can say if the year is greater than or equal to, let's say greater than, and I'll put 2000 in there, and then try running it. And you can probably guess by now, if you've been watching other tutorials in this series, what's going to go wrong. The value on the right is going to be treated as a string of text, or rather as a number, but the year is held as a string of text, and it will come up with an error saying they're not compatible. And that's what's going on here. So is this actually English? The function was invoked with values of type string and integer that do not match. I guess that just about makes sense. So what I need to do is go in and edit my condition. I just need to edit my flow too, for that matter. Edit my condition here. So instead of saying the year, it turns the year into an integer. Now at this point, when I click on that, I need to go and add in an expression. But what I need to do is reference my variable. If I just click in, sorry, I'm in the wrong place. If I just click an expression, for some reason it's not even listing my variables there. So I'd have to type it in from scratch. So I'd have to type variables, open brackets, and then in inverted commas refer to my variable. And inevitably you'll mistype it and make a mistake. It's much better to be able to copy the expression from here. Now, when I last taught this, I swear that you could click on this expression to select it and copy it. Or you can select it by holding down the shift key and somehow selecting it like that. But if I now press Control C, and you're going to have to take my word I've done that and paste it, ugh, this time it's worked. Can I give you two ways which seem to work? One way is what I've just done, which is to select it like that and then press Control C. The other way is to click in the box and press Control A to select it. Control A tends to select everything within the box. You need to make sure you've got this visibly selected. It's not a, the world's best user interface anyway. And then press Control C. I can't show you right clicking because that's not supported. Then go to the expression box and paste, and then I can delete it from there. Now, there's one more thing you need to do before you can uh, apply a function to convert this to an integer, which is to get rid of the at symbol. I don't know why it adds it when you copy it in, but it won't work with it. So now I need to find a function to turn this into an integer. So I can scroll down my list. Those are string functions, collection functions, uh, logical functions. For each one, there's a category to see more. I'm not seeing the full list. Conversion functions. That looks like the one I want. Convert the parameter to an integer. That's exactly what I want to do. I can choose that and then move my brackets so the close bracket symbol comes right at the end. So what this will do is refer to the current item and within that, refer to the field called year. Uh, towards the end of this tutorial, I'm going to type this in from scratch. And I would really recommend you stay with the tutorial to that, because I think you'll learn a lot from that section. But for the moment, I'm just accepting the syntax given to me. So I can choose OK. It comes in pink to show it's an expression. And now when I run this, what I should see is an array of three films, which are the three films which are made after the year 2000. So it's busily looping over my rows, applying my condition to each one in turn. I love the way this number builds up at the moment is on eight seconds and then drops down back down again. Very strange. Um, so you can see there my output is my list of three films. So I've already looked uh, briefly at debugging. I just wanted to show you a little bit more about it. You can see there the output from running my flow. Um, and if you click on the apply to each uh, action, you can see all the different conditions. But what you can't really see is what the film was called. You can see the result of that was false, so the film wasn't made after 2000. But even if you click on raw inputs, it doesn't show you anything. Now I have no idea if my solution is a good one, but it seems to work. What I'm going to do is create a variable to hold the title and then show that within my loop. So I need to initialize a variable somewhere. I'll do it right at the top. And I'll call my variable, uh, let's just call it title. Actually, that might slightly confuse, so let's call it film title. And it's going to hold a string of text. And I don't care what I set it to at the beginning, so I'll just use a space just in case I need to type something in there. I'm not sure if I do, to be honest. What I can then do is go down to my condition and add in an action. And my action will set my variable called title, or film title, to be the current title. And I'd really like to do that here, but I can't find any way to do that. What I'm going to do instead is add it below and then move it and change the order of the two actions. I'll add an action. And what my action will do is set the value of a variable. The variable it will set is the one I've just created called film title. And the value I'll set it to 
is the current title, which I'm in the uh, set of Excel films I'm iterating over. So that's great. I've got something to show now, but I want this to be above it. So what I'm going to do is collapse that and try moving it above. I still don't seem to be able to do that. It's really weird, this. Um, but what I can do is click on the condition and move that down. So you'll get there in the end. So now what I can do is try running that. And with a bit of luck, I'll have a bit more information exposed to me, so to speak. So it's busy leaping over them, but I can already look at this. And I can expand my set variable task. Now I can't because it hasn't finished. I need to just wait for that to finish. So if I click on my set variable task, you can see the first one was gone with the wind. And you can see the condition there. It went down the right hand path, which is what you'd expect. Very old film. But if I go on to one which was made more recently, like Avatar, you can see the film name was Avatar. But for this one, it went down the left path. So you can debug apply uh, to each loops, but sometimes it seems you have to create an intermediate variable uh, to do so. So for the final part of this tutorial, what I'd like to do is to have a look at this expression for the condition <coughs> we typed in. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just overly complicated. And when you're typing in yourself, you'll want a shorter version. This will also teach you more about how expressions are created. So what I'll do is I will bring up the expression. And what we're going to do firstly is look at that items open brackets apply to each. What it's doing is referring to the current item returned from this particular action. But there's a shorthand for it, which is much simpler. So what we're going to do is get rid of that and replace it with item open close brackets. And what that means is in any apply to each loop, it will be a reference to the current item in the things you're looping over. It's much shorter and makes much more sense to me. So we'll use that from now on. The other simplification we can make is slightly less extensive. We can take that question mark and get rid of it. To see why, have a look at the outputs from where we're looping over the Excel uh, uh, rows in Excel. What, that quest what we're doing in the expression is referring to the field called year. But the field called year might not exist. If it doesn't exist, what will happen if you put the question mark in is that it will return something called not a number. But if you don't put the question mark in, it will try to find a field in the JSON called year and crash. Now, I think crashing is probably a better option. I'm absolutely certain the year exists and we're in serious problems if it doesn't. So you don't always have to type this in. So what we're going to do is remove that and just use that simple expression instead. So that's what we'll do now. So going back to my expression, what I'm going to do is delete it and add it in again. So if I click on the expression, I know I want to convert something to an integer. I can put a bracket. I can refer to the current item. You can see it comes up with item there. I can press the tab key. What it's then done is recognize that's a function. If I just backspace one character, it will come up with help on what that function actually does. It returns the item that is in the array for this iteration of the action. I thought I explained it better, worth, better actually. Let me close my brackets. And what I now want to do is refer to the field called year. I'm not going to bother with a question mark because I'm confident that field exists. I can just put a square brackets in to refer to a property within a JSON file. I can then put in inverted commas because I need to, to refer to any item. And then I can put the name of the field and choose OK. This expression is invalid. That's because I missed out the close brackets. Whoops. And I think that really highlights why you might not want to be typing things in like this. So I can now choose OK. And if I run that, I'm hoping it will do exactly the same thing as it did before, because I haven't actually changed the logic at all. It keeps coming up with a concurrency message. At some tutorial in the future, I'll explain about concurrency. And now it's busy looping over the, all the films, applying my condition to each, and the end result will be exactly the same, a list of three films.